All right, so it's time for another one day build. And today what we're gonna be building is an Instagram clone. And I'm basically just gonna be building out the UI for Instagram. And I'm gonna be using Flutter to build this app. And uh, also I just wanna mention that this was one of the most difficult one day builds that I've done so far. And that was because I had to redo the entire build three times because the first time I filmed it in shitty quality and then the second time I hid, I accidentally hid the app on the screen behind uh, some other screen. So uh, yeah, this was a bit of a struggle and an app that should have probably taken something like three to five hours to do, took me about 12 hours to do. But anyway, let's get into the actual video. All right, so it's right now 3.30 p.m. pretty much. And uh, this is one of those things that sometimes happens that just really sucks. I've been filming now for like five hours and 30 minutes. I just started using this like OBS software that I haven't really used before. And I'm trying to use it to kind of learn how I'm going to set up my stream once I start streaming on Twitch. And uh, basically what happened is I didn't set the output quality to be as high as it should. And I'm, I was almost finished with it. And then I was looking at one of the videos just randomly. And then I saw that the quality was like 720p. So it was pretty much impossible to see any of the text. And I could have used that and like just made a video of it anyway. But I feel like that's not really going to be very good. So um, yeah, I'm going to have to start over. So uh, that's what we're doing now. And I haven't really eaten. So uh, I'm going to try to see how fast I can rebuild this thing. So the way we're going to start is we're going to create the project and initialize a repo in GitHub. And if you saw my last one day build, I did build a terminal command, which allows me to just type in create and then the name of whatever I want to create. And then I can just press enter. And basically what that does is it creates a folder for me with the project that adds a readme file and adds a repository to GitHub and then pushes the first commit so that I can just get started. So now we have that going. Now what we're going to do is just create a Flutter project called Instagram, like so. Oh shit. All right, so now we have that and then we run it so that we can get the basic Flutter project up. All right, so now we've removed all of the unnecessary stuff. If we run it now, we get uh, this thing, which is the, just the base for our project. So now what we need to do is we need to look at what Instagram looks like. And I've already brought up a picture here of kind of what the feed looks like. And uh, what I want to start with is building out the uh, navigation bar so that we can move between the different pages. And what I want is to be able to kind of swipe between the different pages. So uh, we'll try to find out how to just make the uh, bottom navigation bar to start with. All right, so now we have the base up and running. And one of the things that I always do when I build this sort of stuff is that I like to set all the different pages to be different colors in order for me to kind of see which page I'm on. So when I'm swiping like this, I can see that, okay, we're actually moving between the different pages. Now we just need to add the bottom navigation bar. <laughs> So now we have the navigation bar. All right, so when it's unselected, it should be black. So now we can see the different icons. And when it is selected, the selected one is colored blue. You can swipe between them or you can press them and move between them. Next thing is to make sure that this navigation bar is a bit more up because as you can see, there's like this little uh, space between this thing and the navigation bar. Okay, so uh, we set the margin from the bottom to be 20. I think that looks pretty good. We can see this clearly and there's a bit of space between this little bar here on the phone and the actual navigation bar. 
All right, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually build out the start building out the UI for the different posts. So how I do this is I usually start by looking at what I'm going to build and see, try to identify the different parts of it. So what I can see here is that a single post is probably going to be a column that will contain several different parts to it. So the first row of the column will probably contain a single row that has a profile picture, the name, the username, a button to follow and a button to see more. The second part of that column is going to be the image of that post and that's going to be within some sort of container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building this out now. <laughs> So now we have the uh, start of uh, a post, which is the username, the profile, and then the button for uh, more information. I'm not sure exactly what it's for, but that's what we have. And now we'll just add the post. And uh, yeah, so we'll start by just adding the post as well. Okay, so now we have the image added as well. So now there's an image on the post. Then the next step is going to be to add this row here with the like button, comment button and send button and then also the save button. So uh, that's the next step. So we'll do that. So as you can see, these icons are kind of outlined. And then basically when you press like, for instance, this thing will get filled in with red. And uh, what I've done is I've just created a icon that is a little bit bigger with a black background and then an icon in front of that, which is a little bit smaller and that's a white background. So that kind of makes it sort of outlined. It doesn't look exactly the same as the uh, Instagram icons do. But the thing is that if you do make this in reality, then you would actually create your own original icons probably in uh, like Adobe Illustrator, but I'm just not gonna do that right now. So this for me is fine because it looks uh, similar enough. What this should do is basically now if I press it, it should turn red. And if I press it again, it should turn back to the way it was. So uh, let's uh, try this and see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work right now. Um, let's see what I can do to fix that. Okay, let's test it again. All right, nice. Now it works. So basically we can like the photo now. And the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna add the comments, the send and the save button. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and add those right now. So this video actually has a sponsor and that is algoexpert.io and what they do is they teach different algorithms and that's something that's very useful if you're like studying for a software engineering job interview because one of the like standard things that they do in those job interviews is they ask you different questions and ask you to solve different problems and basically knowing some algorithms is going to really help you to be able to solve those problems. And even if you're just coding in general, it really helps to know some algorithms just to kind of help you solve different problems a lot faster and also help you write more efficient code. So if this sounds interesting to you, then I would recommend going to algoexpert.io slash cal30. And I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video, because if you go to that link, then you'll get 30% off if you do decide to buy something from there. And lastly, I just want to mention that I try to be fairly selective when it comes to promoting different things on this channel. And this is one of those things that I felt was very much in line with what the channel is about. And also I felt like it's something that is likely something that could benefit you. So uh, that's kind of why I felt like this was something that I could promote. So yeah, let's get back to the video. Alright, so it's coming together. It's looking pretty good right now. What we need to add is also so that we can actually save the photo. And I think that what we need to do to be able to do that is actually go to the user and add saved variable. So basically that would be a list of posts that are saved posts like so. This way we'll be able to actually get all the posts that the user has saved. All right, so now basically what should happen is we can like and we can also save. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's see why that didn't work.
All right, now it should work, I think. Yep, so now you can save it and unsave it, like it and unlike it. So now basically what happens is that if the post is liked and we press like, then it will remove the user from the like list. And if the post is not liked and we press like, then it will add the user to the like list. So uh, basically it will increment the like list up and down. It should print total number of likes plus one and then minus one. So four is the current number. And then now it should print three if this works. Yep, so that seems to work as well. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to go through this bottom section. So basically the final section of the post, which is the likes and then the name of the user and the description and then the comments as well. So I'll just go ahead and add that right now. All right, so now what we have is we have likes, we have the description, we also have the button for the comments. If I press like, then this number will increment by one. We're uh, moving along pretty quickly actually, which is good. Now we have these like two posts, we have the comment section, we have the likes. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the, the stories. So let's go stories. All right, so here you can see what the stories look like. So there's basically the circular like avatar, which is the profile picture for all the people that you follow. And then we have this kind of indication around that, that circle, which is to show that there is actually a story for that person. And then we have the text for the username of the, the profile that has the story. So uh, that's the next thing that we'll add. All right, so there we go. We have the, a list here of all the stories and it's scrollable, which is good. Now I just need to add the username below and then this kind of indication for whether the, the user has a story or not. All right, so now I'm not really sure whether you can actually see this properly, but we're able to make something that looks very similar to the Instagram stories. I'm pretty happy with that. And as you can see, there's like this one has a story, this one doesn't, this one does, this one does, this one doesn't. All right, so now we have the stories implemented. The next thing that I just need to add is a button here so that you can actually press these ones. So as you can see now there is, you can actually press these ones. But as you might also notice, there's a little bit of a shadow behind them. And that is because all the action, the floating action buttons, they have uh, something called elevation uh, attached to them. And if you set that to be zero, then that should make it go away, which it did. So yeah, that's, uh, so now you can press them and we can then add the functionality of showing a story uh, based on the press. Now this is pretty good, like we're uh, almost done with the uh, entire app. So um, so basically what we have left to do now is we just have to implement a page for uh, when we click this likes button here so that we can get a list of all the people that have liked it. And then also a uh, page for pressing when we press the comments so that we get a list of all the comments. And then that is pretty much done. So yeah, we're gonna start with uh, just the likes. All right, so this is what the uh, likes uh, list or likes page looks like. So it's basically just a big list of all the different people that have liked uh, the picture. So uh, this is now what we're going to try to build out. All right, so now we get a list of all the people that are liking the picture. And uh, what we need to add now is we need to add a back button here, uh, like a V. And then this should not say Instagram, it should say likes. And then uh, we're pretty much done with uh, that after, after having done that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, now I was able to figure out how to solve this problem. So now we actually get, so it says likes up here. Now the next thing is just to add the back button so that we can go, come back. 
All right, so now we have the back button. We can go back here. We can see the likes. We can unfollow people. We can follow them. And we can go back here. And uh, now the final thing is just to add the comments as well so that we can do the same thing for the comments. And uh, then we're pretty much done with the whole thing. All right, so now we have basically added the top part of the comment section. So now you can, you could press the send button and that would send whatever you want to send. And then you can press back and you come back here. There are no comments currently, so we kind of need to add some comments to these posts just in order to uh, see some comments. <laughs> All right, so now we have some comments. So you can see that the first post has two comments. The second post has three comments. Uh, I'm not sure what we get if we press this, but okay, so we get that. Now we need to make that look more like the actual comments. So uh, yeah, I'll get into that now. Okay, so now we've added the date time type thing so we can see that this was posted an hour ago and then we have the like uh, and the reply as well. These should of course be buttons so you should be able to press like and you should be able to press reply and uh, then we should just add a little bit of a heart icon at the end there. Now what should happen is if I press the like button then this should turn black and it does. So now you can like and unlike the different comments. Right now it is 8.47 so it's pretty much 9 o'clock. I've been sitting since 9 o'clock this morning. So I've been sitting here for 12 hours and uh, because of the fact that I had to redo the whole thing a couple times it took way longer than it should have. All right, so uh, that's what we ended up with. This is the finished product and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like Instagram or at least like my Instagram does. We have the stories, we have the uh, likes, we can press the likes and we can see who liked the photo. We can uh, press the comments and we can see who commented on the photo. We can like the different comments, we can like the different posts. We can save posts, we can unlike posts, and uh, we can see the different posts from the people that we are actually following. So I'm really happy with how this actually turned out. And what I'm thinking is that I'm about to start streaming pretty soon on Twitch. And uh, I thought I might actually do some of this stuff where I do these one day builds. And basically I was thinking that I might actually continue to build on this Instagram app and build out some of the other pages. So I think that might be one of the first streams that I'll do. Um, and in case you want to check that out, I will leave a link to uh, my Twitch in the description of this video as well. But my name is just going to be the same as it is on YouTube, so Cal Holden. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with how far we got and what we got done and uh, considering the circumstances for this video, I'm really happy that I actually got this done. So uh, yeah, that's it for this one.